Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Phyllis stated in the Jazz Lounge that one minute she and Danny were conversing as friends, exchanging so much history, but then Danny became monosyllabic. Danny stated that he respected how Phyllis was attempting to change her life and the effort she was putting in. She informed Danny that the bug was out to get her. Danny asked Phyllis if she thought he'd change his mind about her because of something someone said. Phyllis expressed regret. She claimed that old habits die hard, and her guard was raised when it came to the bug. Danny begged her to stop referring to Christine as that. Phyllis agreed to a halt. Danny informed Phyllis that Christine had returned to town following a difficult breakup with Paul. He requested Phyllis to leave Christine alone and to refrain from making conclusions about her. Phyllis realized he was correct and promised to stop. Phyllis stated that she would not wish Christine's situation on anyone. Danny stated that he observed Phyllis's efforts. Phyllis claimed she was working hard to break old habits and wanted to learn to meditate. Danny stated that he had been practicing transcendental meditation for years and that it had much aided him. Phyllis requested that he teach her. Danny assured Phyllis that a skilled trainer might help her tame her wild instincts and harness all that raw energy, freeing her from their control. Phyllis requested that he hook her up. She invited Danny to dinner. But Danny declined because he already had plans with Daniel and Lucy. Phyllis inquired as to if Heather was also in town. Phyllis promised Danny that she wouldn't get in the way of Daniel and Heather because she'd learned her lesson. Her family was her first focus, she claimed. Danny invited her to come with them. Christine and Nina exchanged cordial greetings at society. Christine stated that it felt good to discuss openly with Nina and not be criticized for having feelings for Danny. She admitted to feeling guilty because her relationship with Paul had recently ended. But she'd gone to the athletic club after leaving Nina because Lauren had indicated that Danny had been there with Phyllis and Daniel. She explained that she had to leave because she knew Phyllis would trash talk her in front of Danny. She stated that Phyllis had gone with Daniel and that Danny had offered her to sit at the piano while he performed. She stated that it was simple to be with Danny because he was a wonderful listener and she had ended up opening up to him. Christine informed Nina that she and Danny had reconnected as friends, but they had a lot of baggage to work through. She said she wasn't in the finest emotional state. Nina thought it was fate that they both arrived in town at the same time. Christine asserted that she would not hurry into anything. She stated that her personal life was not her priority, that she had lost her appetite as a DA. She stated that she was considering doing pro bono work or corporate law. Nina received a phone call from the hospital informing her that Chance had been shot. Chelsea admitted at Crimson Lights that Chloe and Summer had just clashed. Summer arrived and requested that they clear the air. Chelsea stated that artistic differences were normal. Summer agreed and expressed confidence that they could strike the proper balance, but Chloe said she didn't believe it was feasible. Summer was advised by Chloe that the situation couldn't work and that things would only grow worse. Summer tried to find a rhythm, according to Chloe, but it was hard with Summer being so hands-on. Summer stated that as CEO, she had to be hands-on, but Chloe claimed that one could only develop a rhythm with two individuals. When a third voice was added, one would always battle to be heard. Chloe assured Summer that with Chelsea's return, she would regain her rhythm and balance, but she would always be the one striving to be heard. Chloe stated that she did not want to be there. When Summer left to take a phone call, Chelsea expressed surprise that Chloe was considering leaving. Chloe admitted she hadn't given it much thought before their meeting, but it made sense. Chelsea stated that it made no sense because they were a group. They were a terrific pair, according to Chloe, because Chelsea was the creative and Chloe was the facilitator. Summer, she claimed, was an excellent facilitator for Chelsea. Chloe explained that she and Chelsea had always done their own thing, but Summer wanted to add her input. This was oak because Summer was the CEO and could do whatever she wanted, but it wasn't right for Chloe. Chelsea insisted on having Chloe, 
but Clove insisted on Chelsea creating. She stated that she needed to establish something after what Chelsea had been through, and Chelsea had an opportunity to do so at Marchetti. Chloe told Chelsea she was content with her life and didn't need to be at Marchetti. Summer reappeared and asked what she could do to persuade Chloe to stay at Marchetti. Summer couldn't do anything, according to Chloe, because Marchetti wasn't a suitable fit for her. Chloe admitted that Sally had invited her to accompany her for a consultation. She'd enjoyed how they'd bounced ideas off each other, and she realized that's how it should be. Chloe argued that she adored Summer and Chelsea, and that they would do amazing things together. But it was time for her to move on. Summer said she understood Chloe's desire to accomplish something she was enthusiastic about. The ladies were startled to hear Sharon on the phone pleading with Esther to hurry up since Sharon needed to go to the hospital. Sharon finished the call by informing them that Chance had been shot. Nate was stunned in Victor's office when Victor fired him. Nate had intended to send Victor to a loony bin and surround him with doctors who didn't give a damn in order to keep him away from Newman. Victor stated that he had spoken with the facility's director and had received a detailed report. Nate stated he was trying to preserve Victor's privacy and wanted to plan ahead of time. Nate was accused of lying by Victor. Victor admitted that his memory lapses had been a ruse to figure out who would betray him. Victor also admitted that he was worried it was Adam, but he was pleased it wasn't. Victor stated that he needed to figure out who he could trust. Victoria questioned whether he could even trust her. Victor stated that he'd never seen her so upset when he told her he was returning as CEO and demoting her. He said that Victoria was more concerned about her status at the time than about what her boyfriend had done. Nate had simply tried to help, Victoria explained. Victor was accused of allowing them to be overly concerned about him and his memory lapses. Victor declared he'd done what he needed to do, and the result had proven him correct. Victoria expressed her disappointment that Victor assumed she would take advantage of him because she was upset over being demoted. Victor told Victoria that he had staff all around the world and that he had been watching his firm slowly crumble due to all the infighting and Nate. Victor claimed he knew someone was plotting to take over and that was why he acted the way he did. Victoria inquired as to how long Victor intended to keep them in the dark. Nikki stated that she wanted to inform Victoria, but if Victoria had known the truth, she would have told Nate and never known about Nate's genuine intentions. Nate informed Victor that, based on his years of medical knowledge, he had proposed a sound medical approach to get Victor evaluated and treated, all in Victor's best interests. Nate, Victor claimed, wanted him in the loony bin so that Nate and Victoria could reclaim the power Victor had taken from her. Nate claimed that everyone wanted Victor to appear to be functioning and that nothing was wrong. Adam assured Nate that they would have safeguarded Victor and the company with minimum exposure or leaks. Nate exclaimed that they all worked in the darkness. He claimed to have been drawn into one of those shadows and regretted it. Nate said that his idea was sound and that he had no ulterior motivations. Nate left, saying Victor had done him a favor by firing him. Nate was followed by Victoria. Victoria apologized profusely to Nate in the elevators. Nate, enraged, demanded to know why. He inquired as to whether it was because he had been sacked, and she had neglected the sole doctor in the room. He claimed he had advised Victor on the appropriate course of action, and that Victoria had not supported him. He thought they were a team. Victoria insisted they were, but Nate insisted it didn't feel that way. Victoria claimed she was as enraged as he was, but he claimed she wasn't even near. She began to explain that after everything she'd done to prove her devotion to Victor, but Nate cut her off and said that she'd get over it. Victoria expressed her dissatisfaction with how things had turned out, but Nate accused her of throwing him to the wolves by siding with Adam. He claimed to understand her priorities. Nate argued Adam's plan was a great setup for Victor to be manipulated from within. And if she hadn't noticed that, she hadn't been paying attention. Victor, Victoria claimed, had done this to Nate and all of them, 
and she had not abandoned him to the wolves. She claimed she had no idea what Victor was about to do. Nate claimed she jumped in line the moment she noticed what was going on. He indicated that she still had a job and a family, but that he was on the outside looking in. Nate stated that there was a way to fix things, but Victoria said that she would have to take a stand she didn't want to take. Nate stated that he wished to protect Victor and give Victoria what she deserved while Victor recovered. Nate explained that his mistake was expecting she would always have his back. He promised not to make the same mistake again. He walked away. Nick said inside Victor's office that Victor didn't need to put them through all of that simply to get rid of Nate. Victor stated that he had no idea it was Nate, and that was why he had to test all of them to find out. They all expected Adam to take advantage of the situation and make a power play, according to Adam. Nikki confirmed that they had, and for good reason. Adam stated that he was convinced Victor was psychologically deteriorating, which had shaken him. Nikki instructed Adam to spare them. Nick predicted Adam would take advantage of the situation. Adam inquired as to what benefit he would have acquired. Victor told Nick that he believed Adam had behaved in the best interests of Victor and the company. Nick and Nikki locked their gaze on Adam. Because the three of them didn't get along, Victor believes the crisis would have been disastrous. Nick stated that there had been no crisis. Victor stated that Nick was unaware of this. He claimed Adam was aware of what was at stake and had asked them to collaborate. They'd never know since Victor had terminated the ruse before Nate could be put to the test, according to Nick. When Victoria returned, she told Victor that Nate deserved to be given the benefit of the doubt. She questioned Victor's decision to fire Nate so swiftly. Victor yelled that Nate had referred to as the loony bin, and he'd arranged for Victor to depart Newman so that Nate and Victoria could reclaim the power Victor had taken from her. Nate, according to Nick, desired the advantage for Victoria. Nate, according to Nikki, wanted Victoria back in charge so he could be co-CEO more than he cared about Victor. Nate, according to Victor, would have done everything to achieve that goal. Nate, according to Victor, intended retaliation for demoting Victoria. Victoria stated that it didn't matter how Victor justified firing Nate and that he couldn't explain pretending there was anything seriously wrong with him because that was cruel. Victor claimed he couldn't risk her telling Nate the truth, and his instincts were correct. When it came to Adam, Victoria believed his instincts were useless. Victor, she continued, had said he anticipated Adam to betray him. She claimed it was all a game to find a way to give Adam another pass and justify all the horrible things he'd done all at the expense of those who loved Victor and wanted to preserve his legacy. She expressed doubts about her ability to forgive Victor. Victoria walked away. When Adam questioned Victor whether he was having any memory lapses, Victor verified that he was as lucid and sharp as he'd ever been, and that he would do everything in his ability to safeguard what he'd established. Adam inquired as to where they headed from there. Victor inquired as to where Nick was. Nick said that Victoria had spent her entire life safeguarding what he'd built, and he understood why she was so upset. Victor felt Victoria knew he'd been correct about Nate since she'd observed Nate's developing desire for more authority. Nick told Victor that while he was relieved Nate was gone, he was shocked Adam hadn't stepped right into Victor's trap. Adam stated he'd told Nick that they needed to band together for Victor, but Nick couldn't put his personal feelings aside. Victor stated that with Nate gone, he required Nick's presence at the company. Nick warned Victor not to expect Victoria to forgive Victor since one betrayal was too many for her. Please call me back, Victoria texted Nate from the reception area. We must communicate. Nate received Victoria's text message at Society. Hey, are you free to grab a drink later? He texted Devon after some thought. Devon's response was, Tell me when and where. Christine and Nina arrived at the hospital. Christine inquired about Chance's condition with the nurse. The nurse informed her that they were awaiting NRI findings to determine the extent of the damage. Nana stormed into Chance's bedroom. She approached him and informed him she was there in tears. 
So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.